Good morning. Happy Taco Tuesday. And uh, let's crack into part three of my what is now 10K website wrapper. Uh, well, not quite. It's 9,996. I was going to record this yesterday, but I wasn't quite at 400 subscriptions. And so I just like really needed that. So got the 400 and let's move on. If you're not familiar with what we're talking about here, I'll put up above something like that. I'm new to the YouTube game here about uh, the overview and my distribution method and how we got to 10K in like basically a month. So that was cool. So the technical side of things, what I'm gonna do is to help keep myself organized, I'm just gonna kind of break down like all the main components of like what makes this app work, nothing crazy. Um, but I've just got like a lot of questions about what this looks like. So before we start, let's crack into our, uh, what do we got going on here? Pink slush, Alani new. This came in like an 18 pack. I don't normally get that one, but it's a fun way to, to uh, kick off Taco Tuesday. So, all right. I'm really not gonna really show you much regarding the front end because this is just React Native with Expo. Anyone who's building cross-platform, I mean, this is pretty, seems to have just like taken over. Uh, I know that there were options, like a lot of people have gone with Flutter and whatnot, uh, but I chose React Native with Expo. Any particular reason? Not really, other than just the, the support there and the community is so large that if you're ever gonna run into issues, to solve them is gonna be really fast, right? So the amount of support, packages, libraries, like I said, is just like out the wazoo. Anything you need or want, it's there. Like anything you need to have pre-built for you, it's there. So really not much to talk about. The, the more exciting part is really the crux of this niche and this problem. So I really wanna kinda of dive into this piece. And so what I have is I've got Python scripts sitting over on render, which is just some cloud, uh, cloud uh, infrastructure. And so I'm gonna first show you my code base for that because well, first I'll show you the website, then I'll show you the code base, then I'll show you what it looks like on render. Um, and so essentially all we're gonna do is we're, we have these Python scripts out on render, they're gonna be running on cron jobs, they go out, they scrape data, and then they post it to my database and then my front end can display it, the, the mobile app can display it. So essentially what you're looking at here is we need to find a way to almost have like all these different scrapers for various data types. And there's a qu quite a bit, not quite a bit, but there, there's a few different things. And so for me, I really wanted to have, so it was important to me that when I built these scrapers, I had everything encapsulated in their own like services because I didn't want to have like one massive Python script where it's scraping a bunch of data and then like it has a hiccup in one area and I like something blows up and then I've got to like try to figure out and debug in one you know where the scraping has gone wrong and I didn't want to have all that much logic in each script right so basically I have scripts that handle um, I'm gonna go back because their website's not up to date yet. But I basically have a script that will handle this table. Um, I'll have a script that handles this table. I have a script, separate script that handles this table. Um, I have separate scripts that will handle, I'm gonna come back here. Uh, this data here. All right, so I've got separate scripts to handle this data that go out, grab, look at this PDF, handle this data. So I've got a lot of Python scripts is what I'm saying. Um, so let's check it out. Bring it over. So this is the code base. For example, here's what a Python script for mm, the boat count looks like. So I have this script that's going to count boats. So fishermen in Bristol Bay know how many boats are there in each one of the districts. That's important information to them. If you're not familiar with 
commercial fishing out there. I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole nother, that's a different YouTube channel. Um, and we're here to make money selling software. So let's talk about that instead. So regarding that boat count, that scraper now is going to, that, or that script literally just sits out here on render. And I've got the scraper that sits here. Let's go into the settings. And what you're gonna see is that this bad boy is just running every five minutes, right? Brute force and ignorance. So this is something I wanna talk about. It's not pretty. And this is one of the things that I focus on when I'm trying to just develop any product is I'm not, I, I need to just see is like, is it even worth pursuing this endeavor, right? So I could spend all this time architecting like perfect code that's more robust, more scalable, whatever. But at the end of the day, is anyone going to pay for it? You know, it doesn't matter. It just needs to work. And so what I've proven here is, yeah, people are willing to pay for this. And by moving quickly this year, rather by moving quickly, I got a product out to market, people bought it. And now that tells me, you know what, next year, we're going to go to other fisheries in the state because clearly fishermen like this. And so for me, I could have tried to take all this time architecting and being perfect, not gotten it out this year, waiting till 2026, and then we're a year behind. No, not doing that. So I know I'm probably gonna look, get a lot of criticism on this, but that's this is my approach. One of the things that's a little challenging is that like I think I could have set up services that could basically identify as soon as this um, page updates for certain pieces and then immediately kicks off the script to run the, to scrape it and then send it to my database. Uh, I think there are better ways than using a cron job, but that's what I chose to do. The other part of this is I was pretty relentless watching how they're updating this site and it is not consistent, right? So let me give you an example. One of the key parts of this application is this right here. And this is them announcing an opening. So let's look at one of these. So basically what's gonna happen with something like this is my scraper comes in, it looks at this opening and then it's gonna display it on my mobile app like right here, right? And fishermen love this. So, and it's gonna scrape this information and, and put it out there. The, the part here that's challenging is you, they do, they announce these at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., and 6 p.m. And sometimes, excuse me, 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. You know that those are these like set three hours. But sometimes like they'll update it, for example, at 12 o'clock, they'll, up, they'll like upload this to the website at 11.59. Sometimes it's 12.03. So what do you think I did? I just have a, for this one, for that script that I built to scrape that and run it, it runs every minute starting at like 11.58. It'll just run uh, this one right here. It'll just run, uh, I, like some set times. I think I have it. We we'll basically run it like before two minutes before the hour, one minute before the hour, a minute after the hour, three minutes after the hour, five minutes after the hour. So it's like super just like hard coded and like, you know, it's, it's, but it works. So we're good. All right. Not much else to talk about there. There's a, but this is where it gets kind of fun for this project, right? Because when I want to get this data, they don't update their site that often. So, what I did is I signed up to their email letter, which they kick out to you once they have the latest information. So I actually have a bot that's constantly scanning. I just set up a separate email account, subscribe to this newsletter. And this bot's just running, I know between like 5.30 p.m. Alaska's standard time to like 12 p.m. or like 12 a.m. Like that night, that evening, I know they're gonna run it. So I just have a script literally running every single minute for like whatever, seven hours, six and a half hours, scanning my my uh, inbox to see, hey, is it there, is it there, is it there? Once it's there, grabs the data, puts it into my database. Um, so 
that's what that looks like. All right, so now let's go to this guy here. My back end is all super base. So I use super base, that's gonna handle my database side. It's gonna also handle my edge functions. So when a user requests, for example, weather, let's just do one right now. So let's just request this forecast zone. What just happened? Well, that made a request out to an edge function. That edge function said, hey, what are you looking for? So my front end just sends it information about basically this zone ID. My edge function knows how to take that zone ID it goes out to Noah's API, grabs that info, passes it over. This is, again, is this a scalable and smart way to do this? No, that's a hard no. This is a terrible way to do this. Like if I needed to scale this app to say, honestly, like 10,000, 100,000, a million users, disastrous, disastrous, it's stupid, right? Because basically what's happening is every single user using my app in Bristol Bay is going out and then my API key is making that request for each individual user, giving them data that is gonna be asked for like, and I have 400 users, potentially 400 times asking for the same thing and we're redoing the work every single time. Terrible solution, but I built, I knew that I wasn't gonna have that many users. I wasn't gonna have more than a thousand users, right? So I look at this and go, guess what? Who cares? I can build it in a stupid way in a few hours, get this out the door and launch. So that's where I'm at. Uh, again, significantly better ways to handle this. You could have a caching system. You could even, I guess, do this over a database, um, store it to your own database, I don't know, a lot of ways. This was not the way to do it. All right, so that's that. Uh, as far as authentication goes, not part of this tech stack because there isn't one. Um, you just buy the app or you just buy through a paywall, start using the app. All right, last part of this that I forgot to add is payments infrastructure. And I use, if you couldn't pick up on it, Revenue Cap. I can just tell you right now, I will be using them. This is the first time I've used them. Uh, and it's just a no brainer, right? Plugging them in through Google Play and Apple. I mean, it is just, it was so easy and you can have your live stats. Um, so I'll just, I'll just be using them from here on out for either client projects or myself for free future projects. I think it's a no brainer when you, I'm not ever, yeah, it's a no brainer. Um, if there's something in this technical part that I like didn't hit, let me know, I can cover it. I'm not gonna go like deep into like what we're coding and stuff. This is just like the general stack, but Pretty fun, again, whip this thing together on like nights and weekends, and I actually just had an offer, a very reasonable offer to actually buy this out and add features to it that um, they want. I'm not gonna speak too much about that because, you know, what's the famous saying? Like, birds fly, fish swim, and deals fall through. So we're still, I just sent out we're kind of still negotiating a contract here and that could be exciting. I'm gonna build this out for other fisheries in Alaska next year, so that should be really fun. Probably use the same method. Um, but yeah, I guess that's kind of like what my technical stack looks like. Pretty pretty bare bones, pretty simple. Not really super, some parts are scalable, a lot of parts aren't, but that's all I got. Um, happy Taco Tuesday, I'm gonna get back to it. Throw the uh, headphones on and I hope you have a good one. Cheers.